I said right in the beginning, thanks to the principal and head of the department. Make it a habit to say thank you repeatedly during the day to everyone who kind of does some favor to you. Even the guy who serves you tea, if he gives you tea 10 times, say thank you 10 times. It adds to the human communication if you th thank somebody. The subject of the day is RH sensitization or RH problem during pregnancy. Before I start talking about RH or research sensitization, I would like to just review ABO blood grouping. We are all very familiar with ABO blood grouping. Important thing is to revise or relearn that in blood group A, on the RBCs, there's antigen A, and the plasma has antibodies against B antigen. And similarly, if somebody is blood group B, on her or his RBCs, antigen is B, and she has natural antibodies in plasma against A. If the antigen is AB on the RBCs, we call blood group AB, then there are no antibodies in the plasma. And if the blood group is O, that means you can call it zero or no antibodies, uh, no antigens on RBCs, but plasma has naturally antibodies against a and B. This is important that in ABO blood grouping, the natural presence of antibodies against the antigens on the RBC. And uh, this happens right from birth, and naturally, an ABO system is always present uh, in every individual. I wish to re repeat this, that RBCs has antigen A, plasma has anti antibodies against B, and similarly, as I said earlier, blood group B means antigen B and antibodies against A, so on. With this background, now we come to our research blood group discussion of the day. I told you RBC is having antigen A means antibodies against B. And the main difference between rhesus blood group and ABO is that they don't have natural antibodies if the antigen RH is not there. That means their patients are their women who have RH antigen, no antibodies in the plasma, but there are other group who have no antigen RH on their RBCs, still they don't have antibodies against RH. This is the major difference between ABO blood grouping and RH. RH positive women, nearly 83% are positive in UK and they have RH antigen on their RPCs. And only 17% are RH negative. That means they have no RH antigen on their RBCs, but at the same time, still they don't have uh, antibodies against RH, although there's no antigen, and which is different from ABO blood grouping. But RH positive will never develop RH uh, antibodies in the plasma because they have antigen present. And RH negative people naturally don't have antibodies, but they have the capacity to make antibodies or develop antibodies under special circumstances. What are those circumstances? That, is, that means sensitization. If RH negative gets blood transfusion with RH positive blood, they will develop 
uh, antibodies that development would take few weeks or months not immediately as an uh, immunization uh, you know that primary immunization you give the antigen or uh, any protein the antibodies will take few weeks to develop and uh, the second uh, reason for developing rh antibodies is when rh negative woman becomes pregnant with a baby who, whose blood group is rh positive so these are two special circumstances in the which rh negative women will develop antibodies against uh, rh and they they are when there is pregnancy with rh positive baby and then uh, if there is mismatch transfusion that means a negative woman is given blood which is rh positive a distribution of population who are rh negative in generally in pakistan we don't know because we don't have the statistics but we know that in uk the 17% population is rh negative and 83% population is positive europe has higher incidence there 25% population is rh negative and we have the incidence from india possibly it will be same in pakistan we have a very low incidence of rh negative women that is nearly 5% well immune system i can't go into details of immune system because it would take a long or nearly one hour lecture for describing primary immunity secondary immunity and development of antibodies but the response uh, to pregnancy with rh positive is not always same this is very important to remember that rh negative woman when she becomes pregnant with rh positive baby she will not always develop antibodies and this the incidence is as a matter of very small 50% mothers do not develop antibodies even when pregnant with rh positive baby i can quote my family is uh, sort of a report on that my mother was negative rh negative and uh, i am rh positive my brother i had one brother was rh positive those were the days when perhaps rh system was not known but neither i had any difficulty during pregnancy while i was in the uterus nor my brother had so it just shows there are a lot of rh negative patients who can be spared from developing antibodies only 20% develop antibodies in such amount that they cause problems rh negative women who develop antibodies due to rh positive cells of the fetus uh, they only develop preg during pregnancy while the baby is in the uterus rh positive baby in 10% cases in that is uh, in second and subsequent pregnancies and then during labor most of the sensitization takes place because the, the while the placenta is separated fetal blood a lot of it gets into maternal circulation and sensitize the mother to produce antibodies this happens during labor so majority of sensitization happens during labor not during pregnancy but in pregnancy it does happen so i i talk to the circumstance uh, to you about the circumstances under which it happens but this important thing is that we should understand that the antigen is a complex antigen of rh it is not simple it is composite antigen and we can label them as capital d capital c and e and small d and small c and e 
So C D E capital C D E small. And then important thing is D capital is the uh, major and you know, dominant factor which decides whether somebody is going to be Rh positive or negative. So out of these six genes, C, D, E capital, C, D, E small, there are six, only one gene which is dominant, that is capital D. So presence of capital D decides whether somebody is going to be Rh positive or Rh negative. Well, I go back, slide. Then C, D, E, C, D, E, if you know, these six genes will come either from mother or father. If somebody inherits one capital D, he or she will be Rh positive. But it is possible that capital D comes from both sides. That will also be Rh positive. The one who has only one D capital, one D small, will be called heterozygous. The one who gets both capital D's from parents will be called homozygous. Then we come to pathophysiology. How, why is it so important that we are talking in detail about RH today? It is because it affects the pregnancy or the fetus. That's why. But important thing is that generally speaking, almost always, almost always, primary gravida, if RH negative mother becomes pregnant with RH positive baby, will, the baby will be safe because there are no antibodies in her system. She will generally develop antibodies after the delivery. As I said earlier, 90% of sensitization takes place during labor. So during the delivery of first baby, most of the fetal blood transfusion will go into the mother and cause sensitization. So in the primary gravida, it doesn't matter whether the baby is Rh positive or negative. The baby will be safe from this problem or there will be no sensitization. Well, there is always chance, I use the word chance, I don't say always happens. Uh, there's always a chance that if, if multigravida, that means second and third or subsequent pregnancies, there's a, a positive baby in the womb of negative mother, he or she might be affected. So basic concept should be very clear that in a primary gravida of RH negative mother, irrespective of the baby if is positive or negative, will be not affected by this sensitization. He will be safe. But in second or subsequent pregnancies, there is risk if she, the mother had previously RH positive baby, she had been sensitized during the labor and she would have antibodies. And in such a case, it, the baby, if positive, he is likely to be affected. So I repeat that the primary gravida, the RH positive baby is safe, even if the mother is negative, but in a multi gravida, the baby is likely to be affected. And what are the effects? If RH positive baby is there, because mother has antibodies in her system, that those antibodies cross the placenta and affect the baby. And the effects are baby could become anemic because of hemolysis of his RBCs by the antibodies coming from mother. Or if the hemolysis is severe, the baby can be jaundiced inside the uterus or if it is even worse situation, baby becomes high drops, and in very severe cases, baby can die of this hemolysis. So if RH negative mother has RH positive baby and she has antibodies, then these are 
four possibilities that baby might be affected. That baby may become anemic. At, at birth, baby will be anemia, suffering from anemia, or baby may become jaundice. So at birth, baby will have jaundice, or baby may become high drops, or even die of that high drops. When does fetal maternal hemorrhage takes place or fetal blood gets into maternal circulation? In a normal pregnancy, during pregnancy, I told you earlier, there's very slow or very small risk of fetal blood getting into maternal circulation. That is only about 10% risk. And most of the risk is if there's ectopic pregnancy or there's threatened bleeding a threatened abortion, because of the separation of the placenta, fetal blood gets into maternal circulation. Or if we perform certain procedures, like choriovillus sampling and amniocentesis, in that case, fetal blood may get into maternal circulation. And next is, if there is threatened abortion or if there is antepartum hemorrhage, and during normal pregnancy, if all this is not there, there's very little risk, but maximum risk is during labor. So I repeat that during normal pregnancy, there's very little risk of fetal maternal uh, hemorrhage, but it does uh, increase, the risk doesn't, does increase when there's ectopic pregnancy or threatened abortion, or we perform certain procedures. Now, how to go about the management of the patient? In a, patient, a patient, this is the clinical aspect of this problem. If a patient comes to you in the antenatal clinic during her first visit, irrespective of whether you know her blood group or not, that we must check her blood group. So every pregnant woman, during her, if she doesn't know the blood group, then she must have her blood group checked whether she is Rh positive or Rh negative. If she is Rh positive, then irrespective whether this is a first pregnancy, second, third, fourth pregnancy, she will never have Rh sensitization or Rh problem. But if she is Rh negative, then we have to perform certain tests on her husband and on her. The uh, pay, pay positive, I said, that's not a problem. If mother is negative, then we do husband's blood group. If husband is also RH negative, there will be never any problem because all the babies are going to be RH negative. And if RH, husband is RH positive, then we have to do wife's antibody test and whether she is already sensitized or not. If there are no antibodies, it means she is not sensitized, as it happens in a primary gravida. So it's no problem. You can reassure. And the only thing we'll need is checking of the blood group of the baby at birth. And if he is positive, then give prophylactic dose of anti-D injection, which we'll come talk about in a later while. And if mother is already sensitive, and uh, then uh, it, we have to uh, check the level of antibodies in her blood. That is known as teeter of the antibodies. And uh, on the other hand, you know, if the husband is RH positive, uh, mother uh, is RH negative, then we have to check husband's genotyping, whether, as I told you earlier, whether he is homozygous, homozygous positive or heterozygous positive. Because if husband is heterozygous, he will have C, D, capital E, and small d. And if he is homozygous, he will have both Ds from mother and father. In case of uh, husband being heterozygous, then there is 50% chance the baby will be Rh negative or Rh positive. 
if husband is homozygous, then all the babies will be Rh positive. So it helps us to know whether the baby in the uterus uh, is, homo uh, is Rh negative, possibly or Rh positive. If husband was homozygous, then we can be sure without testing the baby's blood that baby is Rh positive. And if husband is heterozygous, then there's 50% chance. After deciding this, during pregnancy, if mother is not sensitized, she is primary gravida or she does not have antibodies, we can give a, a prophylactic anti-D injection at 28 weeks and 36 weeks, and then immediately after birth or within 72 hours birth. So this is the prophylaxis used for those where mother doesn't have antibodies and she delivers a baby who is Rh positive. But on the other hand, if the mother has, is sensitized, she has antibodies, then the management of that pregnancy would be monitoring of antibody teeter. That you repeatedly check the level of antibodies. If the level of our antibodies, our teeter is going up, it means the baby is Rh positive. Because even minimal sensitization, minimal feto maternal transfusion will act as secondary stimulus for creation of antibodies. And we know for secondary immunization, we need very small dose. So I told you earlier that in a normal pregnancy, there's very small amount of feto maternal transfusion, but in if the mother is already sensitized, even that will give rise to the st stimulus to increase antibody heat. And so one, we have to, in a RH negative patient who has antibodies in her system, we repeatedly check antibodies whether they are going up or not. If they are not going up, then there's a possibility the baby is RH negative, not sending stimulus to the mother. And in addition to the level of antibodies, if the mother is negative and antibodies are going up, then we have to monitor the baby. Because as I said earlier, the baby it can be affected by antibodies. Either he can become anemic or jaundiced or in severe cases, high drops. So during pregnancy of RH negative mothers who has antibody, then we have to look at that patient from two angles. One, repeatedly check antibodies. Second, monitor growth of the baby or monitor the fetus for its well-being. And with this close kind of monitoring and of the fetus, we'll know how severely the baby is affected. If we find out the baby is affected, then in severe cases, we give intrauterine transfusion. We, under ultrasound guidance, we inject uh, RH negative blood into the umbilical cord near its insertion to the placenta. And this transfusion goes to the baby. RH negative cells are safe. They are not hemolyzed. So anemia is corrected, but it has to be done repeatedly, every two weeks, until uh, we deliver the baby. And after giving repeated intrauterine transfusions, we have to deliver the baby early, and uh, that decision will depend how severely the baby is affected. And generally speaking, if the baby is affected, we do cesarean section. I said before term. And when the baby is delivered, immediately we collect cord blood, and baby's blood from the cord. And these are the four tests which we do on that cord. That is, if we determine baby's blood group, whether he's Rh positive or negative. And 
we find out whether baby has been affected by mother's antibodies by direct Coombs test and hemoglobin percentage of the baby tell us whether baby is anemic and bilirubin will tell us whether baby is jaundiced or not. So in RH negative mothers, whenever the baby is delivered, because we don't know the blood group of the baby till delivery, we will do quad blood tests and these four tests will be performed. If the baby has been affected by RH antibodies during in utero life, then these are the things which we can do. If a baby is mildly affected, we keep the baby under close observation that hemoglobin is not too low and baby is not jaundiced. But if the baby is jaundiced, we'll know this from both those cord blood tests, baby's jaundice, mild jaundice can be treated by billy light. And if the baby is severely jaundiced or uh, it's severely anemic, then baby may need blood transfusion. But in a very severe case of jaundice, their baby will need exchange transfusion. With these four measures, generally, we can save the baby. And overall, with this management, the prognosis is good. I have made this flow chart for your convenient learning of, for the management of RH negative woman during pregnancy. If the RH negative woman comes to you, first thing is we test her, her blood group and if she is positive, then obviously no problem. Then if she is negative, test the blood group of the husband to find out whether he is negative or positive. If he is negative, again, no problem. But if the husband is positive, then we test mother's test blood for presence of antibodies. If there are no antibodies in the blood, then it, during this pregnancy, there will be no problem. But if the husband's blood uh, genotype is uh, homozygous, then we assure the baby will be RH positive. And if he's heterozygous, there's 50% chance the baby will be positive or negative. Then accordingly, as I said, if you suspect the baby is going to be RH positive we, during pregnancy, we do repeatedly in the antibody tests and monitor baby closely and uh, if uh, the mother is negative with no antibodies we give prophylactic anti-d injections during pregnancy and immediately after birth and this flow chart grows on uh, antibodies present as i said check the baby repeatedly and according to the risk, either baby needs intrauterine transfusion or early delivery. And if there are no antibodies, will not baby is not affected. If you go over it again and again, I think I have given you nearly ten MCQs, and if you look at them and solve them, keep them in your notebook. It will be a help to revise your topics. Thank you very much for listening to me. Although I don't see your faces, I hope uh, you have enjoyed my talk as much as I have. And give me the feedback. If you continue to give me the feedback, I, I hope I'll be able to do it better next time. Uh, because the purpose is to make you knowledgeable about the subject which I talk and help you to pass the examination. Thank you. See you next week. Sir, is there any possibility that baby is neither RH positive nor RH negative? <laughs> yes, sir, answer that. No. The baby has to be either RH positive or RH negative. There is no third way. If there 
is no RH is negative, so hmm. neither. So, क्या मतलब है? If baby mother is RH negative, then husband's blood group decides whether a baby is going to be RH positive or negative. If husband who gives capital D to the baby, he will be RH positive. If husband gives small D, then baby will be RH negative. Then what is golden blood? Uh, uh, universal donor, uh, that, that term I knew was universal donor is O negative. That blood can be given to all if you don't know the blood group, that blood group can be given to everybody. And A, B, in, in negative, blood, A, B, positive. positive cannot be given to anybody other than A, B, positive patient.